All right, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Fernando Loera. I'm with Texas United Realty. I'm one of the mentors. Uh, and today we're gonna to be focusing on lease forms and how to's. Uh, so on the agenda, we have um, looking at sort of the process of a lease from listing side and the tenant side, pre-qualifying tenants before you show them leases, typical requirements for a lease, uh, we'll also look at typical forms used in a lease, knowing on the uh, federal law for service companion animals, and some tips on how to spend your time productively and efficiently in the lease. Um, there's been um, a lot uh, I've been noticing in the last, just last weeks, there's been a lot of demand on leases. Uh, I have a couple of lease listings, and I've been getting a lot of phone calls every day. Uh, typically around five calls uh, on inquiries. So it looks like uh, leases are going to be really hot uh, this year. So the process of a lease from the listing side and the tenant side. So first we'll focus on the listing a lease. Um, you know, of course you schedule a listing appointment with the owner. Uh, but things that you need to discuss, um, there's, you know, the rental values, you need to run a CMA report on the area. So for example, uh, I have like a real quick demo here. Uh, you have the, in order to do um, a CMA on rentals, we're kind of accustomed to doing single family, but um, in order to do a CMA on rentals, you select the rental quick rental. So that's what you use for. And yes, you can do CMAs on rentals. I know we're so used to just doing it on land or, or properties that we're selling, but yes, you can do it on rentals. <clears throat> Once you do that, you select, of course, the statuses of active, option pending, pending, continue to show, and sold. Uh, typically, we do the six months. And then I normally type in the, the, pass, the, um, the address that I'm going to be renting, for example. So I, I, I like to use this little yellow box. And here I would just type in the address. Like here I have 17123 Med Hill, which is one of my uh, listings. Once you do that, you, you can then uh, generate a CMA report. And the CMA report will typically look like, like this. Um, you know, I don't know if you've run this before, but this is called Quick CMA. And I really like to use it because it kind of gives a concise uh, information uh, in that area that you're targeting. And, and if you want to see what um, the CMA consists of, you can look at the header here of how I have it selected and what am I selecting. Um, of course, it's broken down through active properties, sold properties. And of course, whenever you're speaking to a owner who wants to lease their house, uh, you know, you being the listing agent, you typically look at sold properties. Uh, I understand that they're leases and you're not really selling them, but they still use the verbiage sold properties. You can call them, uh, you know, leased properties if you want. Um, typically, what I look at is I look at the list price, and then I look at what was it, what was a lease for. So, for example, the list price here was thirteen hundred for this particular property, but at least also for thirteen hundred. So similar, and pretty much all of them are similar. If if this lease price was down compared to the list price then that goes to show you that the tenants are negotiating. But typically what I like to look at is this quick statistics. The quick statistics here, I like to look at the sold price, and then I look at minimum, the max, and then the average. So in this particular neighborhood, the minimum uh, for leases is 1,300 a month. The maximum is 1,800 a month, and then the average is 1,530. So depending on what you're leasing as far as number of bedrooms and square footages, you can kind of pinpoint what um, you should be uh, renting it for. Of course, the landlord's always going to tell you, well, I want more. So um, another thing that I like to show the landlords is this cumulative days on the market. This is how long these uh, houses were, have been on the market. You have 14 days, 92 days, and so on and so forth. Now, if all these sold or leased properties were like in the 90s and everything said like 95 or 92 or 90, then you know that those houses take a while to rent, okay? 
All right. So that's sort of the CMA that I kind of go with um, over with uh, the owner. Uh, also, when you're, you're talking to the owner, the landlord, you know, what type of lease terms are they looking at? One year, two year, three years. Typically, uh, you're working with investors or, or people that just own some properties, but they typically are investors and they just prefer it, the house being rented for a while, you know, for many years. So uh, tenant requirements, you know, uh, you need to ask the landlord what kind of tenant requirements that they're looking for. You know, you know, and typically what we hear from landlords is good rental history, no evictions. Sometimes they might say pet size only, you know, uh, a certain size. And then, you know, of course, no smoking. Uh, when you're going to be list, uh, listing a lease, you, of course, need to get up for lease sign, lockbox, take pictures, room measurements. So that's on the listing side. Uh, this is, these are some forms that you use when you're doing uh, a listing of a lease. Of course, the typical IABS is very important. The listing agreement, uh, pet agreements, lead base if the house was built before 1978. Poor spa addendum. This is very important if that rental house does have a spa or a pool. And of course, in order for us to get paid our commission, the agreement between brokers, the W-9 and invoice for apartments. Uh, some landlords do require an invoice for, um, for houses. So these are the forms that I just mentioned, the IABS. I'm sure all of you are kind of used to these forms. But one thing that I wanted to bring up is down here, you see how I have in yellow, tenant represents themselves and listing agent Fernando from Texas and Realty represents the owner only. Sometimes there's, you, the, typically, whenever you're a listing agent, there's times or many times that the tenants do not have representation by a buyer, by a buyer agent. Mm -hmm. They typically are just on their own. And yes, you can uh, complete the transaction. No, you cannot be a dual agent. Um, you still represent the listing uh, agent. Your fiduciary duties are for them. But... Uh, you use this special type of verbiage so like that uh, the tenants can represent themselves and it's just to cover cover us in that legality. We also add that same verbiage in the uh, lease agreement as well. Okay, uh, the, here's a, an example of the listing agreement that we use. Somebody. Um, here's an example of the residential real estate listing agreement. So if you're, if you're representing the landlord, the owner, and you're going to be listing the property, this is the form that you would use, uh, you know, the, the addresses of the property, legal description, what's going to be removed, uh, when you lease, uh, if you are going to add something like if the landlord's going to put a refrigerator, washer, dryer, then you would use this, uh, paragraph here. The listing price, you know, what, what's it um, going to be uh, rented for? How many months of duration? And keep in mind, this this is the listing uh, agreement, so that's what we have here. Of course, you and the landlord are going to sign it. Commissions. This is very confusing for new agents. Sometimes they don't really know how we get paid as realtors. Um, we typically get paid a hundred percent of the one full month. So in this particular case, um, which is $2,300, that would be our commission, $2,300. Of course, we have to split it, but typically that's, that's the way it works. Uh, it would be $2,300 that we're talking about. Uh, another thing that you got to keep in mind is the landlords, were, they're only going to receive 11 months of rent because that first month goes to Texas United Realty or it goes to a broker. So typically the, the rent, the landlord's only going to get 11 months of that 2,300, for example. Um, and then I wanted to show you here uh, as far as um, the other commissions. So here, co cooperation of other brokers, whenever there's two agents, here we're stating that out of that 100%, we're going to split it, the, split it into two. So that 50% is gonna to go to the buyer agent. 
So that's where the split comes into play, okay? Uh, of course, uh, normally we always select intermediary status. Uh, that's usually the 99.9% .9 of the time we select that. Uh, if you don't select it, that means that Texas United Realty is not allowed, or any of Texas United Realty agents are not allowed to show your house. And I'm pretty sure you want everybody to show your house, <laughs> if it's your listing. Okay. Um, so that's about it there. And let's see if there's, what was uh, the, yeah, agreement between brokers. This one's uh, typically is a little confusing uh, form for, for most of us. This agreement between brokers for residential leases, this is the form that we use between uh, Texas United Realty and another uh, broker. And it's an agreement between each other. Here we're stating who the people are as far as the tenants and the landlords, but here we're stating how much commission we're gonna be getting. Um, uh, typically, typically when there's two agents uh, helping the clients, but we get 50%. And of course, we're not gonna get the rest of it. And here it's a little confusing too, you know, where it says other broker, we, we do put Texas United Realty in the broker information, but you are, you are the person that signs it. You as the agent are, uh, is the one that signs it, okay? Uh, here it also tells you to submit the, the W-9. Down here it says submit IRS form W-9. That's already uh, already signed by Rick Rogers. See how it already has it? You don't have to fill none of this stuff out. Please do not touch it. This is strictly where you send it to the other broker with the agreement between broker document like that we can get paid. But please don't fill anything in here. It's already done, okay? And then I had uh, mentioned about an invoice. This is just one example of invoices that you can use. Uh, I think on the website, Texas United Realty, there's a, di a different form. And we may use, we typically use these invoices when we're dealing with apartment complexes, okay? All right. So uh, now the tenant side. The tenant side, this is a lot of homework, a lot of things that we got to do in the beginning. Um, and a lot of us are going to be showing leases this, this year because it's, it's a really hot, hot market right now. And I strongly suggest you pre-qualify your tenants uh, prior to showing them leases. What I mean by that is ask them about their credit scores, ask them about criminal background checks that they performed or if they know of, you know, ask them about, you know, how their rental history is, you know, do they have a way of, of providing employment verification? Um, I know it sounds like you're prying into their business, but I usually tell my potential prospects, the more information you give me, the better I can help you. Okay, so because, you know, we're gonna have to contact the listing agent uh, when we're representing them, and if they have a credit score of 500, well, guess what? That's gonna be very difficult to, uh, to help them. We, there could be a potential landlord that accepts it, but you know. <clears throat> uh, so landlord checks all this. Uh, tenants must uh, earn a combined gross monthly income of three times the rent. So for example, if the monthly rent is 2,000 uh, uh, per month, they, they would have to earn 6,000 gross monthly salary. And a, qu a question that I always get, a get asked is, is this combined? Yes. So if the hus the spouse, you know, husband, wife, and maybe a brother, you know, uh, are going to be living there, it's all combined salary of all three adults. Okay. Um, again, good rental history, no evictions or, breach or breaches of leases. A lot. Of, well, I'm not going to say a lot, but there's more often people that are looking for rentals that have these kind of situations but sometimes they've had them like maybe five years ago or seven years ago or such. And, and you know, on the application, it does say, have you ever had an, an eviction? It doesn't say, have you ever had it in the last five years? It literally says, have you ever had an eviction? And they have to answer truthfully. So um, we need color copies of the government issued picture IDs that are not expired. It's amazing how sometimes I receive a driver's license and it's been expired. Um, so that you need to make sure. 
uh, that it's not expired. Current paycheck stubs, one to two months, or maybe an income tax return if they're self-employed. Uh, this shows proof of their financial status. Application fees, typically around $35 to $100 per adult. These are non-refundable. One common question that I always get asked by my students is, can um, a tenant apply in several places? Well, yes. The problem is if they're willing to lose their, their uh, application fee. In other words, if one application is $40 per adult and it's two of them and they, they submit $80 and then they go somewhere else and submit and their, and their application fee is 35 and 35 and one of them approves them uh, or maybe let's just say both of them approve them. Well, the tenants can't move in two places. So they would have to pick one and then would have to withdraw their application. Well, they're not going to get their uh, money, money back. So as, if, as long as they're willing to lose money, then it's okay. Um, I also ask the tenants, must, you must have the first month's rent and security deposit in your bank account before I show you leases. Uh, landlord will not wait if approved. In other words, there's typically landlords, as soon as they, they review the application and then they approve the tenants, they immediately might say, okay, within 48 hours, I need this. And within you know, three days, I need the other. And if you as a buyer agent uh, has to tell the, the landlord, oh, well, guess what? Can you wait until ne you know, the next pay period? <clears throat> the, in the landlord's eyes, they're gonna go, oh, great, we're starting now. To have problems. So I usually, uh, my clients, I usually prep them and prepare them that, hey, I need you to make sure you have that money ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> so here's some forms you use for tenants. Uh, again, like the IBS is typical. Uh, the lease application, uh, usually whenever I send them the lease application, I also tell them to make sure they give me colored copies of their driver's license. I don't like to receive driver's licenses that are scanned because it's black and white and you can't tell. So what I usually do is I, I'll tell the, the tenants to text me a picture of their driver's license. And then, that, and then I, what I do is I just submit it as an email to myself and I, thus I have the colored copy. Uh, paycheck stubs, income tax returns, sometimes up to two years. Uh, the lease application fee can be money order or cash. Uh, now with COVID-19, uh, what, what's been happening is there's been a lot of uh, like a PayPal or Zelle or that kind of uh, way of paying. So that's starting to become popular. And then the broker notice to tenant is another form that we need. So let me show you uh, the lease application. Now, a common question that I always get uh, from my students is um, about the lease application. Uh, sometimes I get the impression that my students think that there's several types of lease applications and I tell them that it's the same one from Trek um, or Texas Association of Realtors. This lease application is used for all of us here in Texas. So it's always going to be the same. Um, as you can tell here or in bold, it says each occupant and co-applicant 18 years or older must submit a separation a separate application. So that tells uh, you that if there's three adults, then you need to do three of these forms, three applications, okay? Uh, if you wanna get credit for that uh, lease, make sure that your clients fill out this section and make sure they use the, you know, you're the realtor. That way that the recipient of this lease application can say, oh, they have a realtor and here's, you know, Johnny information. And then they must fill out all this application information. Um, one thing that, um, that uh, I need you to ensure when they're filling this out is that they completely fill it out. Um, of course, if they have a current address and, and they've been living there for like five years or so, of course you don't have to do the previous address because you know, they've been living here quite a bit. So you th they can skip this, this particular section. Um, again, similar to the current employer, if they've been there 10 years, of course you don't need to do a previous employer. Um, another thing that uh, some, uh, a lot of, uh, I've been noticing in my experience is there's like a child support or some kind of disability checks. 
here's where you would put that information, <clears throat> like if they get paid child support. Uh, and, and that's important to add if you're trying to make sure that their gross monthly income is that three times requirement. Okay. Uh, this is important too, if they have a pet or not. <clears throat> and then down here, as you can see the, that, that question I told you, where it says, has applicant ever been evicted? It doesn't say, has applicant ever been evicted in the last five years? So if there's a, a prospect tenant that you're working with and they say, well, it happened five years ago, can I just answer no? No, you can't do that. Because it says, has applicant ever been evicted? Okay, and the same thing with all the other ones. So make sure that they're, they're aware of that. Again, they just need to tell you, uh, you know, about it. Uh, they have to sign it here. And then there's another form here. This one, I tend to just use the I and then the property. I tend to leave this other blank in case, uh, um, you know, the listing agent needs to fill it out. But I usually leave that blank. And then they have to sign here. So make sure that there's two signatures. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, here's the broker notice to tenant. Uh, this one's uh, typical. Uh, here you sign it. I know this is kind of confusing because sometimes I common questions that I get from my students is, Fernando, does Rick Rogers, the broker, have to sign it? No, because it this slash means or. So sales agent name is you, okay? So that's what you do, and then you fill it out. And then the tenants have to sign this on this side. And this is this broker notice to tenant is just more you're you're telling them that you are not an inspector. So they if they want to know anything about the uh, physical condition of the property, they would have to hire somebody to to help them with that. But you are not uh, uh, a inspector, so that's sort of your protection as far as the forms. Okay. So another thing that's really important. Um, is about the uh, service com companion animals. As a listing agent, whenever you're listing a property, there's a form that you're gonna be sending uh, the landlord in addition to the other forms. But this particular form is has to do with companion animals. And whenever a tenant has companion animals, uh, they're not considered pets at all. Uh, uh, even if the landlord has a no pets policy, it doesn't matter. They can't even charge a deposit. Okay. So it's very important that you understand that and the landlord understands that as well. If you want to know more information about that, there is a link that you can go to to kind of learn more about the uh, landlord guide. You can also send it to the potential landlord you're working with as well. But this is very critical. You can get in big trouble as well. Okay. So um, some helpful tips, but before that, I wanted to show you another thing that I, I notice uh, or I have noticed in my experience with my students is that um, the checks that we get for the first month's rent and for the deposits, they typically don't have a, um, a uh, uh, like a memo field, like it's missing. Um, another thing that I've noticed that's very common errors or problems is that whenever they make out these checks, uh, sometimes they'll make like, for example, here you see Claudia Munoz. Well, she's the landlord and she's receiving the security deposit. Okay. I've seen uh, mistakes from agents where they actually have the security deposit sent to Texas United Realty. Well, that's a no, no. Texas United Realty does, is not supposed to receive at all the security deposit. And Rick or whoever's in the office is gonna tell you to go get a new check. And it may, it, may, it may embarrass you as well. So make sure that the first month's rent, that one does go to Texas United Realty because this first month's rent is how we get paid the commission. The security deposit is supposed to go to the landlord only. Now, there are some brokers that have property management services, and those are special cases. Whenever there's a property management involved, 
which is not going to be us, it's going to be another broker, they will tell you to make the deposit to either the broker or some kind of property manager, and that's okay. But us at Texas United Realty, it has to be separate. Okay. The only thing that we can do is it's okay to drop off this check at our office, but either the landlord has to come and pick it up or you have to take it somewhere because Rick is not going to do anything with it. If this is wrong and it has Texas United Realty on it, we cannot cash it and write a new check. Okay. All right. Uh, one last uh, form I wanted to show you is this is a, a, an actual residential lease agreement. And this is where, you know, the agreement between uh, the landlord and the tenants when they're starting their lease. It kind of looks similar to that exclusive right to, to lease. Here it talks about rent and when is the rent delivered and prorated rents and other things like that. Typically, this form is filled out by the um, listing agent, but there are times that the listing agent will tell you to, to do it. I don't like that, but if they're going to tell me to do it and I'm the buyer agent, guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm probably going to be messing with a lot of the stuff where it's in favor of my client, <laughs> which of course I make the listing agents mad. But anyway, uh, so I, like for example here, if here, if typically is fifty dollars, well, guess what? I may put twenty five dollars <laughs> if it if the if it's late, and then the listing agent goes, "Hey, we charge more than that. We charge fifty. I go, "Well, then you should have filled it out." They don't like it when I say that. <clears throat> okay, so some helpful tips. It's important to pre-qualify tenants before showing them leases. Uh, do they know what their credit score is? Typically, I always hear, "Oh no, I don't know what my credit score is." Well, you can use Credit Karma. That's just a, I know it's not accurate, but at least they can at least get a, a ballpark of what it might be. Credit Karma is free. They can also get them through their banks. Almost typically every bank or credit card account that you have, they'll, they'll give you free credit scores. You know, how's their rental history? How much do they earn? Do they have the first month's rent security deposit? Now, um, there's going to be times where they do have a uh, problem in their background. And uh, what, I, what I do in that situation is I tell them um, the landlord may not accept you, but if they do, they may ask for more deposit. So instead of being one deposit, they may ask for one and a half or up to two deposits, okay? Are you willing to give more money? Typically, if they're really desperate, the tenants will say yes. They'll say, yeah, we'll, we'll work in it, you know, because we really need a place. Now, one thing that sometimes happens, and I usually push this too, is I try to convert these leases into um, for sales, in other words, into buyers. And sometimes I, I'll wait for an opportunity or I'll tell them later, but I'll wait for an opportunity where they go, wow, this is a lot of money, you know, $2,000 for rent, $2,000 for deposit, and then another $2,000 for deposit. Uh, you know, because of my criminal background or whatever. And I go, yeah, they, sometimes they say, well, might as well buy a house. I go, oh, I'm glad you you asked that. Have you thought about uh, getting pre-approved? No, I've never thought about that. Well, now's your chance. Why don't you do me a favor? Get pre-approved. I got a couple of contacts or you can go to your bank. And while we're you're getting pre-approved and uh, or while you're working on the pre-approval, we'll still continue to look for houses. And there's been times where I've converted them to buyers, even though they started as a renter uh, prospect. So that's something that, that you can do too. Um, uh, make sure, uh, you know, another helpful uh, tip is make sure the lease applications is legible, completely filled out. Uh, Application will not be accepted on the background. Um, background process will be delayed if the data is not readable. So my point here is if you receive the lease application and you're not able to decipher what they're writing and you're not sure, well, guess what? The listing agent's not going to be clear either. And then you submit the application that's not complete and the listing agent's having a hard time. And guess what? A listing agent then receives another application that's really pretty and nice and neat, well, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna pick that one instead. 
because they can't even read yours from your client. Um, also make sure you're, uh, you contact the listing agent to make sure that that lease is available. We don't want you burning any, uh, wasting time. Uh, again, make sure about the first month's rent. Um, and then first month's rent normally goes to the broker, security deposit goes to the landlord. Okay, that's my presentation. Uh, let me know if y'all have any questions. Uh, make sure you unmute your uh, computers. Fernando, I have a question. Yes, sir. If, like, there's three uh, adults, they want to lease a house. Yes. And the main leasing household will go with one person or of three of them. As far as the what? I mean, if, if like, uh, let's, let's say two brothers and yes. one wife. Yes. And they want to lease. Yes. In one name. I mean, the one who has good credit. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're talking about the, um, like, who's responsible? So yes. Okay. So, for example, here's the lease. Here's the actual residential lease. Okay. And, okay. and let's just say that you're working with the listing agent. And you tell the listing agent that only one person has the you know salary it's got the credit yes. but the other two don't yeah okay right. so and you want that tenant to be responsible so for example right here it says joe the tenant yes okay now that's it's okay to do that because this paragraph one in this section right here it talks about who's responsible mm -hmm. So whenever uh, there's a problem with the uh, lease that they're not paying, they're gonna chase these two people, okay? Okay. So now what you're saying is, hey, I don't want Mary the tenant to be here. She's still gonna live there, but she's not uh, capable of providing any credit scores or whatever it is. Now, in that case, the, t the landlord is still gonna do a background check but they're more okay. checking for the criminal background, right? They still have to check criminal background, but okay. they understand but that you're not using them for their credit score. So they will, he will not check the credit score for the other two. Yeah, you can say that, you can say things like that. You can say, hey, can I only pay for the background, the criminal background check? In okay. other words, you can, you can select which one you want them to check. In other words, it's not, it's not worth it for her to pay forty dollars, if only she's going to only get a criminal background check, right? Because the forty dollars is for the rental history, for land, you know, for uh, for employment history, for credit. You know, there's a lot more things that we're paying for with the forty dollars. So you need to talk to the listing agent and say, "Hey, I understand of, of you running a criminal background, but." please don't run the rest of it because it's, we know it's bad. And sometimes they'll adjust to only do the criminal background check is my point. So, okay. so that will go in here. So let's just say in this example, you only put Joe the tenant, but Mary's not gonna be here anymore. She's gone. But right. where, where Mary needs to go is over here where it says occupants. Okay. Occupants is where, who's living there. Right. This occupants means who lives in that house. Okay. It has nothing. This does not mean that they have any credit checks or nothing like that. So it can be the kids, you know, one kid that's eight years old, another kid that's four years old, and then Mary and Joe. Okay. Yeah. So, so, the so other Mary's two, still going to show up here. Right. Because so the occupants. other two, they, they will not check the credit score for them? No, not if you say that their credit score is really bad and you don't want them to cons be considered. Okay, got yeah. you. Yeah, because you, you know it's bad already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this and, is a question. Right, yeah. but, you, but you're okay with them checking the criminal background check? Yes. Right. No, no, I'm just saying that's what you need to tell them. 
it's okay to check the criminal, but please don't check the credit score because we already know it's bad. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's a good, very good question, though. I really appreciate that. Any other questions before we wrap it up? Yes, can I do? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I have I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So I have three adults: husband, wife, and a family friend. Mm -hmm. So family friend has a passport. Okay. No credit and has a job. Okay. But the job is it doesn't make three times the rent. Okay. okay. Sure. Wife, wife doesn't work, has good credit. Husband has bad credit, but makes good money. Oh, so it's like a, it's like each person has something good, and together they all, like if all three of them together are good, but each one of them only has one part of that good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. It's like one has the good credit, another one has the good salary, and. <laughs> And they all, but together they work great. <laughs> together. Yes. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I mean, in those situations, um, as last, we really focus on a lot is evictions, uh, breaches of contract. We're, we, we, we're okay with credit scores. Like we look at credit scores like 580 or 540. Um, now, when there's a credit score of 500 or 520, those are what they're concerned about as landlords. Um, so, um, you know, that, that, what in that situation that you just told me, typically what happens with the landlord is that they'll still approve them as long as the criminal is okay. But um, we'll just ask for more security deposit. Okay. It's almost like, it's like money talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, money talks. So uh, okay. I would tell them that to please be aware that they may have to pay one and a half to two months deposit. Okay. Yeah. Another thing that I would do is I would prepare the uh, application, the driver's license and the paycheck stubs and, and package it all in one email and, and then send the, your clients a list of all the houses, but don't show them any house and tell them you, I, we will not see any house until I get a pre, it's almost like a pre-approval from the landlord first. And so then you, they tell you, okay, uh, Grace, we, we like these 10 houses. Okay. Um, or let's just say they like seven out, out of the 10. Then what you do is you contact every listing agent and say, here's the situation, would you approve them? And then they might say, no, here's the situation, would you approve them? We haven't seen the house yet. And they might say no, and so on and so forth. And let's just say out of those seven, four say maybe. Well, now you got four maybes. Now you can go and see the houses, but only those four. And your, your tenants will be very happy with you because you already did all your due diligence in the beginning. Now they're not approved yet, but at least they kind of, the landlord already kind of knows the situation. And then you can then, after you show the houses, you can then tell the tenants, I need you to tell me which one's option one, which one's option two, and which one's option three because we're not coming back. And that way you already know the categories of, of each one of them as far as their interests. And that's the way I do it to make my time productive. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Oh, uh, do you do this pre-screening with the listing agents before the application? Yes, uh, no, I, I actually send uh, the good question. I actually send the application, the driver's license, almost like it's ready to go, you know, like everything. And then I'll send it to them and I go, hey, here's here's their their stuff, you know, their application, driver's license and everything. And and here's a uh, maybe a, an email that says, to whom it may concern. When I was 21 years old, I, I had a DWI. Now I'm 41 years old and I haven't drank since then, you know, or something like that. So they write me a little email. And all that, I package it up and I send it to each listing agent and going, would your landlord accept them? Yes or no. Would your landlord accept them? Yes or no. And, and that makes my job very easy because once, we're, once I get a three, a three maybes, then I go show the houses. And my clients are very happy with me 
because they already know I did my due diligence. I'm not wasting anybody's time. Right. Well, are they paying the... the no, nobody's paying nothing, no. Okay. No application fees. Okay. Because I, tell, I usually tell in my email to the listing agent, I usually say, we have not seen the house yet. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of us realtors do that. It, it's kind of common to do that. Thank you. It becomes the norm. Let's put it that way. Good to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Fernando. Yeah, Brian. Hello. Hello, sir. Hey, Fernando. Um, that, that same due diligence and best practice, can that, do you recommend applying that to apartment complexes as well? Oh, uh, for apartment complexes, uh, they're pretty uh, easy to work with as far as uh, they're, they're the ones that tend to get uh, approved people that have credit scores of 500. So they're a little bit more, less uh, stricter in apartment complexes. Um, I mean, they don't really receive an application. They don't really receive, receive driver's licenses. To them, you have to go online and fill it out, you know? So, and then there's no listing agent. You know, it's a property management company, usually those apartment complexes. So, <laughs> Uh, I would I would actually go to apartmentdata.com. Uh, you should register to apartmentdata.com. Uh, I think it's a $50 flat fee, one-time fee for realtors, but it kind of acts like an MLS system. And in there, they tell you all the criteria of every apartment complex. Okay, uh, the same, I guess, if, if I, there's a particular client that has a, a criminal background, like a DWI example that you had earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so now there, that I don't think apartment complexes, uh, well, I'm not sure how they deal with uh, criminal backgrounds. Yeah, I, I'm more experienced with just dealing with uh, landlords or listing agents, but not apartment complexes too much. But I don't know how they deal with the uh, criminal background, so I wouldn't be able to. Uh, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to give them a call, right? <laughs> Right. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, try it out and then let me know, hey, Fernando, it worked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's a good, hey, it never hurts to try, right? Uh, and then your your clients will love you. <laughs> they go, man, Brian, you're great. <laughs> you're a great realtor. <laughs> Work, word of mouth. That's what. That's the way we make uh, references here. Any other questions, guys? Thanks, Fernando. Yeah, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Well, like I told you guys, uh, releases are getting really, really, really busy. Uh, and I, and if you guys have that technique about posting on Craigslist and posting on Facebook uh, Marketplace, that's a real good place. I, I, I post a lot on mar um, Facebook Marketplace and I get on one house, I'm getting like five uh, inquiries a day. So, uh, but leases are really hot right now. Uh, you can make some good money. Um, let's just say in worst case scenario, uh, at least you get only $500 as far as net. If you do five a month, that's $2,500 a month. I, I think everybody would like to have $2,500 a month in their pocket. So, um, all right, guys, uh, if y'all don't have any questions, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And, uh, we'll talk again. Oh, Fernando, I'm oh, sorry. Yes. This is how. Sure, no problem. Yes, ma'am. Yes, quick question. The pre-qualifications, uh, do you verbally, usually verbally ask them or do you send yes. them email yeah. questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so let's pretend. Oh, hi. Uh, you, you're pronounced ha? Uh, yes, pronounced okay. ha. Oh, hi, ha. Uh, thank you for calling me. Uh, I understand you're looking for a, a, a place to stay. Uh, is it all right if I ask you a couple, I mean, a, a place to rent? Is it all right if I ask you a couple of questions before we get started? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, typically I ask these questions because landlords are gonna ask me these questions. So I would love to uh, get the answers so like that I can help you. And again, the more you tell me as far as information, the, the better I can help you. Um, I understand you wanna live in XYZ place and you're looking for $2,000 a month. Uh, do you guys earn uh, 6000 uh, for gross monthly salary? Because the requirements are three times the monthly rent. Okay, thank you. I'm glad you, uh, you, you earn a little bit more. Um, and as far as uh, do you have a good rental history? Uh, I'm, I don't know if you're staying in an apartment or 
another landlord, but uh, how does that look? Okay, great, great, great. Uh, so, uh, so with your answer, I presume there's no evictions or breaches of leases, right? Oh, okay, great. Uh, I'm also gonna need color copies of the uh, uh, government ministry picture IDs. Um, also, uh, I need to ask you a personal question and, and, and I you know, hate to tell you, ask you this question, um, but also landlords look at criminal backgrounds uh, and you know, they're looking at you know, DWIs or they're looking at something in your criminal background that may show up when we, they do a background check. Do you have anything? Oh, good, good. I'm glad you don't have anything. Well, okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to be sending you a list of houses that you told me about, and we'll, we'll schedule something this weekend. Thank you. So what did you think about that, huh? Wow. <laughs> because I get he uh, hesitant to ask them those stuff because I'm afraid they, they get offended. Right. You know? and, but, you should, but you heard the way I say things like, I, you know, the more you tell me, I can help you better, you know. I, I, I give right, and then right. I, and then, but you notice how I use the criminal uh, question way at the end. Yes. I, I didn't ask him the criminal background as the first question. I asked him more as the fifth question. Right. So right. I know it's just a little flow. Yeah. It's just a little flow. You, you just need to practice and practice and practice because you know, you can always tell them if they start getting mad at you or, or you feel like they're getting mad at you, just tell them, look, landlords ask these questions and I want to be able to, my goal as a realtor, as your agent is to put you in the house, correct? And they're going to say yes. So the more you tell me, the better I can help you. And if you have some issue in your background, then I'm, we're going to have to do a game plan. And I'm, I need you to fill out the lease application. I need you to fill out all this stuff. Give me your driver's license. And then I'm going to send you a list of 10 houses. And you're going to tell me which houses you like. And then guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be calling every listing agent and say, hey, they have this background issue. Would you accept them? Yes or no? Hey, Mr. Listing Agent, do you accept them? Yes or no? And so on and so forth. And then that way, those prospective tenants will then go, oh, man, they're this lady is really trying to help us. You see that? Yeah. Wow. What, I want, uh, what I want all you guys as new agents and even seasoned agents is I want you to be problem solvers, not just plain realtors. Try to help people. They're, they're going to really like you for helping them. So think about it that way. Okay. All righty, guys. Well, uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll be talking again.